Okay, bring on the feels. Nostalgia is a funny thing. Once upon a time, it was actually even called immigrant syndrome, and people thought it was a genuine illness. Which actually makes sense, given that the etymology of the word comes from Greek meaning to return home and pain or suffering. What do I do? Ah! These days, of course, it has a lot of different connotations, most of which are really positive. We as gamers are particularly prone to nostalgia, and I think it begins forming almost immediately as soon as we're having an experience that's memorable while surrounding a particular game we're playing. In any case, my buddy Brazzle the Gamer tagged me actually just yesterday to find out what my top five most nostalgic games are. So, here they are. The first game on this list is a combination sandwich of video game goodness, and it's Pokemon Gold and Silver. When these games came out, I was in middle school, sixth grade to be exact, and I'd just finished Pokemon Yellow, so I was riding that Pokemon hype train like a manky on a slippery Dratini. Ooh. The New Game Plus feature was so exciting, the fact that you could go back to Kanto after you finished your exploits in Johto, and I distinctly remember one night hanging out at my friend Troy's house and staying up all night trying to catch the Red Gyarados that you get after, I think, the third or fourth gym, somewhere in there, and being so excited that there was something like that in this game and that shiny Pokemon existed. Crazy. Revolutionary. Steve Jobs. Unforgivable. Kevin. Number two is Age of Empires, the Age of Kings on PC. As well as its expansion, The Conquerors. Which added a bunch of extra... Kevin. Comparatively speaking, I never played a ton of PC games as a kid, but I definitely got into some Sims, and I loved me some Spore when that came out while I was in college. But this was one of the games that I spent the most time on, period. Console or PC, regardless of platform. I remember playing this game at a friend's house and just being completely blown away by it. I hadn't played a whole lot of real-time strategy games before, and this one was right up my alley. So I didn't have my own copy for a long time. And finally, when I got my own copy, I actually bought it for $10 at Walmart in this Age of Empires Gold set. Every once in a while, I'll still load this game up on Steam, and although I don't sink the time into it that I ever used to, it still holds a really special place in my Neolithic heart. Nothing quite like killing a bunch of- Kevin. Number three on this list just might be the most surprising of the bunch because it's FIFA 2002 on the Nintendo GameCube. Once again, this was a game that came out while I was in middle school and I was playing soccer very heavily at the time. I even continued playing this game into high school and my friend Patrick and I would actually go to his place after school sometimes and load this game up. And I'd of course had years of practice playing it so I got really, really good at it, to the point where I was playing it on the hardest difficulty and was still beating teams by 20 and 22 to nothing, or... Yeah. In any case, that's the soccer game, and frankly, it's the sports game I've spent the most time playing in my whole life, so it holds a really special place to me because soccer was such an important part of my life at that time, and that game especially served as kind of a Kevin for my friends and I. Game number four on this list is The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. This game was spooky. It was hard. And really, it was different than just about any other Zelda game and many other games, frankly, that had come before it. I know I held up the 3DS version of this game, but that's just because I actually don't yet have a cartridge copy of the game. I sold the one I got for my 12th birthday off long ago at a garage sale that I actually hosted. But speaking of that fateful day, my 12th birthday on which I received this game, it was especially memorable because I remember opening the game and although I had several friends over, all of whom were excited about the Zelda game too. None of them were as excited about it as I was, which kind of explains a lot about me now, I guess. My parents were encouraging us to go outside and play basketball, and they were all okay with that. I just want to feel no basketball, know what I mean? While they all went outside to go shoot hoops, I stayed inside and began working my way toward the first temple. I now feel kind of bad that I neglected my friends for the first couple of hours <laughs> while they were outside, and my parents were furious with me, but it just perfectly captures the sense of wonderment and joy that I had while diving into that game for the first time. But that game was a kooky, kooky beast. All right, guys, we're here. The fifth and final most nostalgic game. I played a demo of it on a Pizza Hut demo disc that I got over and over and over again 
doing the same thing because I was so blown away by this game. And the level of quality and attention to detail and the voice acting, similarly to Majora's Mask, I hadn't experienced anything like that to this point. And this game still is easily one of the most special games I've ever played. And that's Metal Gear Solid on PS1. This is my original black label copy that I got when I think I was 10 years old. I remember asking my mom to take me to Walmart so that I could spend 40 bucks to buy this thing using birthday and Christmas and paper route money that I had saved up. And of course she had to buy it for me because it's rated him for mature. But more so than the purchase of this game itself, I think what makes it so special is the fact that I played through it a bunch with my brother. He was just as into it as I was. He hasn't played it quite as many times as I have. I've played this game somewhere between 20 and 30 times. I lost count after 15. But he would sit by me and we would experience this game together because he had a great memory for remembering where certain items were and what the next steps were. To this day, this is a game that my brother and I still talk about, and I would think he would agree that it's one of his favorite games as well. And even though Metal Gear Solid 3 and some of the other games are very unique and have advanced the game in lots of different ways, Metal Gear Solid 1 still holds a special place on my Kevin. All right, guys, those are my top five most nostalgic games, and thanks once again to Brazzle the Gamer for tagging me. I really appreciate it. And now I get to tag three other YouTubers to find out what their most nostalgic games are. First up, I'm gonna tag Cannot Be Tamed. She has some really well thought out reviews and lists and other gaming experience that she likes to discuss and engage with her audience on. So I highly recommend you check her channel out and I'm curious to find out what her top five nostalgic games are. Second, I'm gonna tag a cartridge gamer. He's a buddy of mine over on Instagram. He posts a lot of really cool photos. He's a seriously proficient collector. So I'm eager to hear what games tug at his heartstrings a little bit too. And lastly is another Instagram friend of mine and that's gonna be Retro Games Vinyl and Beer. I really enjoy following him on Instagram and I'm glad that he decided to make a YouTube channel pretty recently. So if you haven't already, go over, check his channel out, watch his videos, give him a subscription, and I'm eagerly awaiting his list of his five most nostalgic games too. That's gonna do it for me today, guys, and thanks so much for stopping by and checking this video out. If this was your first time here at CrossChop and you liked what you saw, please subscribe. Thanks so much for hanging out at CrossChop today and play heavy.